Okey, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Berjumpa lagi dengan channel kesayangan kita, sahabat sekalian. Apa kabar? Semoga kita semua selalu dalam keadaan sehat wal afiat. Tidak kurang suatu apapun dan selalu dalam lindungan Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Ya, ini adalah seorang wanita yang menjadi korban propaganda media pada saat Peristiwa 9 September 2001 yang lalu Wanita ini justru memeluk agama Islam setelah melihat berita-berita yang memojokkan Islam ketika terjadi serangan 11 September Dilansir di CGTN Online Amerika Sahabat sekalian sebuah media ini memberitakan dengan judul Millions in the US converted to Islam after 9/11. Meet one of them. Ini dipublish sudah beberapa tahun yang lalu ya, September 2021. Yang artinya jutaan orang di Amerika Serikat masuk Islam setelah 9 September. Masya Allah luar biasa. Dan beliau inilah salah satunya. Luar biasa judulnya Masya Allah Dan ini bukan orang Islam yang nulis ya Sumber beritanya justru dari Amerika sendiri Media Amerika CGTN Amerika Masya Allah Serangan 11 September di Amerika Serikat Oleh ekstremis muslim memiliki konsekuensi yang aneh Banyak orang Amerika pada waktu itu baru pertama kali mengenal Islam Dan memilih masuk Islam Antara 2000 hingga 2010, muslim di Amerika Serikat tumbuh dari sekitar 1 juta menjadi 2,6 juta. Meningkat 67 persen, menjadikannya agama dengan pertumbuhan tercepat di Amerika Serikat. Menurut sensus agama Amerika Serikat, pada 2017 jumlah muslim di Amerika Serikat diperkirakan mencapai 3,45 juta menurut Pew Research Center terlepas dari pertumbuhan ini muslim di Amerika Serikat hanya mewakili sekitar 1% dari populasi Amerika pada tahun 2020 demikian temuan Institut Penelitian Agama Publik sebagai perbandingan orang Kristen berjumlah sekitar 70% dari populasi sementara 23% orang Amerika mengatakan mereka tidak berafiliasi dengan satu agama atau di identifikasi sebagai ateis atau agnostik saat meliput pemilu Amerika Serikat tahun 2020 CGTN mewawancari aktivis Ohio dan delegasi konvensi nasional partai demokrat Cynthia Cox Ubaldo yang masuk Islam setelah 11 September jadi wanita ini bernama Cynthia Cox Ubaldo seorang delegasi konvensi nasional partai demokrat sahabat sekalian memeluk Islam justru setelah kejadian 11 September Ubaldo mengatakan dia tertarik pada Islam saat dia meneliti serangan teroris oleh ekstremis muslim ketika dia belajar lebih banyak tentang prinsip-prinsip agama dia menyadari bahwa itu adalah kebalikan dari apa yang dipercayai oleh para teroris yang berpartisipasi dalam serangan 11 September setelah pertobatannya Obaldo menghadapi beberapa contoh diskriminasi ya. setelah dia masuk Islam dia mendapatkan diskriminasi dan bahkan penyerangan karena kepercayaan dan pakaiannya lebih dari separuh orang dewasa Amerika yang disurvei oleh Pew Research pada 2019 mereka merasa bahwa muslim banyak didiskriminasi dan 82% mengatakan muslim menghadapi beberapa diskriminasi dalam sebuah wawancara dengan New York Daily News Associate Professor University Kentucky Ihsan Bagby mengatakan diskriminasi hanya membangun ketahanan di kalangan umat Islam ya wawancara CGTN Amerika dengan Cynthia Cox Ubaldo ini terjadi ketika itu Presiden Amerika masih dipimpin oleh Donald Trump yang memang agak anti terhadap Islam 
Dan Alhamdulillah pada saat election Amerika, Presiden terpilih yang baru Joe Biden berhasil mengalahkan incumbent Donald Trump yang Joe Biden ini lebih adem terhadap dunia Islam. Baik langsung saja kita ikuti bagaimana sebetulnya pengalaman dari Cynthia Cox Obaldo ini ketika dia sampai kepada Islam. Selamat menyaksikan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Most American Muslims who are reverts uh, have a similar story if they were around at not during 9/11, um, where you're kind of like, who are these people and why did they do this? And you start googling it, and like in my case, I'm pulling it up on the computer because uh, I'm seeing it on TV. You know, Islamic terrorists. And I'm like, what is Islamic? I mean, what is Islam? And the funny thing is, I knew Muslim people. You know, I had Muslim friends, but you know, you think it's like Christian, Christianity, Jewish, Judaism, Hindu, Hinduism, Buddhist, Buddhism, Buddhism. And you know, Muslim, Muslimism, you know? Uh, you know, I didn't know the word Islam. I really didn't even know the word Islam yet. And this was 2001, the day of September 11th. Yeah, because my son was at school. I was at work. We left everybody we just shut down work and I came home because I got a notification my son was going to be coming home so I get on the computer I thought he's gonna he's he was in fifth grade I thought he's gonna have tons of questions right so I, I better start looking this up you know if he asks who did this why did they do this all this I need to have all this information right so I'm looking it up online um, what is Islam and the first thing that pops up and this Had this not popped, if something else had popped up, I may not even be Muslim right now. Um, literally, the thing that popped up, that I, the first thing I clicked on, the first link I clicked on, what came up on the screen was like, you ever see The Simpsons where it's like that cloud and it says, The Simpsons, comes out of the cloud? Um, it was sort of like that, only what came out, it says, Islam equals sign peace. Islam equals peace. I was sitting at my kitchen table and right over the my laptop is the tv in the family room and i'm watching the towers falling for like the 50th time and you know that they've repeated it on cnn and i'm like that doesn't look peaceful who are these people so that made me the fact that that popped up made me want to keep looking so i clicked on some more and then i'm like well it doesn't look peaceful and then i'm reading well what do they believe and or what are they called And then it said the people who follow Islam are Muslims. I'm like, wait, my friend Mo is Muslim? Cool. So that, that made me keep reading and keep reading. And then I uh, came across a couple different um, verses out of the Quran. And so then when my son got home, I, you know, I'm like, honey, do you want to talk about all this? He was about what? I said, well, you know what happened? He was, oh yeah, like a plane hit, you know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that sucks. Can I go over to Keith's house and <laughs> sure, play basketball, all right. I just kept reading, I was fascinated. And I'm like, well, what do these people actually believe? It said, uh, you know, that they pray to God and God in the Arabic is Allah, but it's the same God as Jews and Christians pray to because it's an Abrahamic religion. I'm like, okay, so it's sort of like a branch. Okay, cool. I was in Morocco for a while and I, went to a Catholic church in Morocco and opened up a Bible and it was in Arabic. Wait, you know, I'm looking and I said, wait, that says Allah. Because I recognize the, what Allah looks like in Arabic. I don't read Arabic, but I know a few of the, I can recognize some of the words. And I said, that says Allah. He goes, well, yeah. I said, but it's Catholic. <laughs> it's Christian. He goes, yeah, but this is an Arabic speaking country. I said, wait, so Christians? in Arab countries say Allah? Says, well, yeah. Why would they say God? That's an English word. Like, oh, okay. I kept reading and I'm like, well, I pray to God. I don't pray to Jesus. I'm like, well, then who is, do they believe in Jesus? You know, and they. And so I'm reading like Islam and Jesus and said they believe that Jesus is the greatest of all prophets, that he will come and judge the living and the dead on judgment day and all these things that Christians believe. 
And I'm like, well, what the heck's the difference? This seems like a part of Christianity. Is there any difference other than the scarf? You know, and a lot of Christians wear scarves. You go to like South America, women are wearing scarf, head scarves to get, you know, to go into a Catholic church. I don't wear it very much in public unless I'm going to be at a Muslim event. If it's going to be all Muslims, then yeah, I wear a head scarf. If I'm not going to be around Muslims, I still dress you know, modestly, I don't, you know, wear short skirts or, you know, I wear long pants and long sleeves and loose garments, you know, but I won't wear a headscarf because people are cool with a tunic and leggings <laughs> and my long, beautiful hair flowing, but I put it in a bun and wrap a scarf around it and suddenly I'm a terrorist. So, like, really? Come on, man. I went to high university in Reynoldsburg High School and, you know, I'm as much Ohio as anybody else here. I had a guy, um, uh, come up from behind me and I didn't even see him and he came up from behind me and he said um, I had to defend effing terrorist whores like you in Afghanistan and I start to turn my head to see because I didn't even know he was there I'm have my shopping cart headed toward my car and I start to turn around and as soon as I do he takes you know my head and just bashes it down and those little bolts that stick up you know it hit and went like that and cut me. He goes running. And so these two, um, what I thought were young African-American kids, teenagers, take off after him, literally jump on top of him to make him, you know, to stop him in his place. So they bring him back, these two kids. Turns out the two kids, they're not just a couple young African-American teenagers. They're Somali immigrants, refugees. Muslim and they saw a Muslim sister being hurt you know that's how Islam is like when it comes down to it we look out for each other because we're all considered you know a pariah in the society oh and I've had uh, you know just weird looks and people walking by and flipping you off and you know just you name it like I was coming out of a Meyer store and <laughs> Uh, I'm walking out, she's walking in, all of a sudden I feel this, and she's pulling my scarf, and she goes, I'm liberating you, <laughs> she goes and tries to pull it off, I'm like, ow, you know, I'm like, you're choking me, and she's like, literally yanking at it, and she goes, she goes, there's no reason, you shouldn't have a, you shouldn't let any man make you wear that, I said, lady, I'm single, and there is no man right now in my life, and, you know, and if there was, if he told me to wear it, I would probably choose not to, because he told me to. And she goes, right on, sister. <laughs> and I said, let me explain how this works, you know. And so I explained that it's, you know, it's, uh, it's not totally obligatory, you know, like it's, it's totally a woman's choice if she chooses to wear it or not. That's why a lot of Muslim women in Western countries we do, we wear it sometimes, you know, some wear it all the time, some don't wear it at all. She was actually progressive. She was a Bernie supporter, it turns out. Yeah, who knew? And, uh, you know, and she goes, I'm so sorry. She finally did apologize. I'm so sorry. I said, well, next time, don't just go up and rip things. Up. That's assault. You know, that's, that's kind of illegal. And you ripped my scarf and she offered to pay for it. Like,